Before we get started, I want to ask you, what modifications have you done to your Tacoma or your truck or your car uh, in the last few years? And what will have you done differently now that you know what was going to happen? What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Prince and today I wanted to sit down a little bit to talk about some of the upgrades and modifications that I've done to my Toyota Tacoma in the last few years. I have been driving a 2019 Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro for the last few years and to be honest it's a very nice looking truck. It doesn't look like it needs uh, anything, you know, but as you spend uh, more time in the truck or as I was spending more time in the truck, I decided to, you know, change a few things and now the wish list, right, was uh, created. So uh, I started just putting items on my wish list, and now I kind of broke everything down into two phases. Uh, phase one is almost completed, but apparently the list of items and things I want to put in the truck just keeps growing. So uh, let's get started with what I have already done. Right, for each of the mods that I'm going to be talking about today, I'm going to be answering four questions. The first one is why I decided to go with that mod. The second one is the pros. Uh, the third one is the cons and then the fourth one is what would i have done differently uh, now that i know uh, what was going to happen the first thing that i installed in my truck was a knn air filter and the reason why i picked it was uh, basically because it's a plug and play you can remove uh, your stock intake and just uh, install the new one right all the brackets all the screws and everything is fit for that uh, for your truck or you know in this case for my 2019 toyota tacoma um, other brands would have probably done the same thing, right? Needing, you know, uh, minor modifications for, for, for probably less money. Uh, but this one was just like a, like a glove. It was a perfect fit for it. So uh, that's why I decided to go with it. The pros of almost any air intake will be the same. Uh, basically, you will improve your throttle response from mid to high uh, RPMs. Uh, it's a very easy install with almost uh, no major modifications to your truck, like in my case. And to be honest, and my favorite is the uh, the engine sound or the way the engine is gonna sound uh, after you are done with that installation. One immediate con that I saw or noticed right after I saw the KNN intake is that the troll response at very low RPMs, maybe like you know 2,000 and under, and I drive a stick shift is uh, is very. Uh, it's very slow, all right? Or, and sometimes you feel like your car is getting more air than it's, it's able to burn gas. Um, so for that, I'm preparing another modification, right? That's probably for phase two, which is the uh, the k and throttle uh, controller, which basically uh, modifies the uh, the signal that you're sending from your, uh, from your gas pedal. Um, and then that's the signal that it sends to the ECU. And apparently that fixes that uh, you know, low RPM as well as, you know, improved performance slightly, but that is uh, to be proven, right? That's a very easy installation. I might be doing that in the future. I don't know yet, right? If you ask me why would I have done differently with this uh, air filter intake, uh, probably nothing, all right? It was a very easy uh, install. Uh, the uh, benefits are noticeable uh, right away. And uh, the con or the throttle response at low RPM is only noticeable if I'm trying to start it at a um, low RPM and in a higher gear. You know, like if you are in, a, in third or fourth gear and you're trying to uh, to just, you know, gain some impulse. Um, so to overcome that, I use uh, Code 1 gear and I'm ready to go. But we'll see once the, uh, the throttle control is installed, if, you know, that changes anything. The next upgrade that I did to my truck was a, the mud tires. Uh, I decided to go with the BF Goodrich KO3 uh, 285, 75, rim 16. So I didn't change uh, the stock rims of the car. And those are uh, mud terrains, right? These tires have great traction, right? In the snow, in sun, in the, you know, wet surfaces, and uh, they honestly drive uh, very well. Um, they have a very aggressive look and they don't make uh, too much noise or they're not very loud like other mud tires uh, when you're driving at 70 or 80 on the highway. All right, those are the pros. Some of the cons, all right, especially when you're putting bigger tires on your truck is that first you're making your truck accelerate a little slower. You're also lowering the max speed that your truck is gonna be allowed to go safely, all right? So for example, on my original tires, I was able to go at 90, 100, and I wasn't very concerned 
about uh, the safety or you know the control or the balance of the car now with the mud tires i think like 90 probably is my top like i wouldn't go any 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 faster just because the tires are not rated for higher speeds right another con when you install uh, mud tires is that your alignment and your balancing is going to be a little more expensive not by a lot but you know it's probably like you know like 10 or you know 20 more dollars per tire uh, the first time I balanced these tires, I did a regular balance uh, and then the truck um, ended up vibrating at around 80. Uh, the next time that I had to balance it, I did an impact um, balancing, which apparently uh, is better for more tires. And now my truck is not vibrating at all at you know, 80, 90 miles per hour. But uh, again, I don't go any higher than that. So I don't know if it will vibrate at a higher speed. But again, these tires are not rated for higher speeds. Right. If you ask me what would I have done differently when I was changing my tires, I'll tell you that probably um, I would have changed my rims from 16 to 17, right? Because uh, since these tires are a little more difficult to be uh, balanced, um, some, some places they'll put double weights on the, under your rim and that double weight is, um, is very close all right, to your desk all right, for your brakes. So uh, depending on the weights that they're putting, sometimes your, uh, your weights might be having some contact, right, with your rim, and that might just cause, uh, might just cause an, um, you know, like a squeaky noise. So what I do now, when I take my, uh, my tires to uh, get balanced, I tell the guys to please do not use double weights, and you know, when I leave, there is no squeaky noise or anything. Right, the next upgrade is probably the one uh, that you guys might beat me up uh, for what I did, but um, you know, especially because I have a TRD Pro and it comes with a Fox suspension, a lot of people have told me, why do you do that? Uh, you know, you shouldn't have done it, etc. cetera, but uh, this is what I did, right? I basically got a lift kit, okay, that consists on a three inch in the front and two inch in the back. And did I say lift kit? It was actually a leveling kit. I also got the uh, sway bar adjuster and the drop differentials, okay? Um, and I'm gonna be talking about the pros as usually first, all right? The pros is that, you know, it's a very cheap kit if you want to lift your truck a couple of inches to get extra clearance. And the cons is that it requires professional uh, installation, all right? You have to take it to a place that they're specialized in suspensions or, you know, they know how to handle this stuff. It's not something that I would have done in my backyard. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's relatively, you know, cheap installation, but it still has to be done uh, by a professional. Another con is that it will change the resting position of your shocks. So right now it will be basically a little bit more open than uh, what they're designed to be or originally designed to be. Uh, and that might change your suspension performance. But to be honest, I haven't noticed any suspension performance since I sold this uh, leveling kit. Now, some people have asked, uh, all right, what else do you do and, and why do you do it? So uh, I also got the sway bar adjuster, which lowers the sway bar, all right? Now that the truck is higher, it lowers the sway bar and avoids, uh, avoids the sway bar to be very close to your shocks, all right? I compare um, my uh, leveling kit with the same leveling kit installed in the uh, TRD off-road and I have about uh, two inches of clearance or an inch and a half of clearance between my sway bar and my shock. And the uh, TRD of road without the sway bar adjuster is barely a finger or you know, less than half an inch of clearance. So uh, I guess if, if that truck at some point uh, is articulating too much, uh, probably the sway bar will hit the shock, which is not a good thing. One more thing that I did with this leveling kit, and especially because the TRD Pro comes uh, one inch higher, right? At least in theory, from the off-road and the sport and the limited, is the uh, the drop differential that basically use uh, adjust the uh, the front differential uh, or your front yeah your front differential uh, to the new height that the truck is going to be sitting at. Um, I honestly didn't notice any um, you know performance or you know change in performance from the suspension. Uh, you know, I took it off road a couple of times and, you know, I, I honestly like the look and I like how it feels. But if you ask me what I would have done differently from this suspension, probably nothing. I would have done the same thing. But now when my shocks expire, right, I don't know, 50, 60 miles from now, I'll probably get the new arms. The shocks are still a little higher, new springs and just do a proper lift in the front and maybe leave the blocks in the back. 
All right, the next upgrade uh, was the audio system, all right, which is basically one of the first videos that I put on the channel about uh, car upgrades or modifications, right? So uh, I decided to go uh, and do a car audio overhaul or whatever you want to call it because I, I drove a very long trip to, uh, it was like 1,200 miles each way. And, uh, you know, while I was driving, I was like, you know what, this trip would have been a lot more enjoyable with better music. So as soon as I go back, I picked up all the components, uh, which is one of the videos. I'm, you know, I'm gonna leave it down in the description uh, for that upgrade, and then, um, you know, just made the video that you guys saw earlier in the channel. The pros of that upgrade is obviously a better sound system, all right, and, and quality sound in your car. The cons is it's a very uh, time-consuming installation, all right, and it could get very costly just the installation if you really don't know uh, how to do it or you have to get you know pay someone uh, to get it done for you so uh, i recommend that you find a buddy that you know maybe knows how to do it and then you do it with them and you know maybe you learn something uh, along the way or you know a lot of youtube videos show you how to do most of this stuff uh so you don't spend as as much money but in exchange we'll be spending a lot more time i honestly don't think i would have done anything differently from uh, my audio system like my components and everything i would have kept everything the same but probably the two 10-inch um, uh, bases that I put, uh, for a, I would have probably just make a custom box that fits there rather than buy a pre-built box to then modify it the way we have to modify this one to make them fit. So uh, that might be for another video. I might be taking that box out and just making a whole new one from scratch. All right, next we have uh, the bed rack system that I installed um last week right so uh, basically ever since i got the, the truck i wanted to put a rooftop tent uh in the car so when i go camping uh, almost every summer uh, a couple of times a year i uh i just have the tent in the car uh you know i definitely like how it looks and uh, i feel like it will be less of a hassle than you know carrying a tent over and you know cleaning it etc so uh you know we'll see if it is more or less hassle than a regular tent but uh for now i'm just waiting for that delivery as well and i will probably be joining in another video but let's not shift from a bed rack to a rooftop tent all right that's a separate conversation uh the bed rack will basically let you just mount gear on your bed rack right maybe you want to put a, a set of uh, recovery boards or i don't know a, a a pick or a shovel for the snow or you know things of that nature you can just uh mount them there and there are a lot of mounting options for the ones that i got so i think it's a it's a i think it's a good thing Right, some of the cons is uh, obviously you're adding more weight uh, to your truck. That's number one. Number two, you should definitely put a, a bed stiffener, right? So, uh, you know, the, you're adding more weight, especially when you add a rooftop and then you want to be sitting on top of that with probably a couple of people. Um, you should add bed stiffeners, right? Which I'm going to be doing in the, uh, in the next few days. And because you're adding more weight to your truck, you're very likely lowering your uh, miles per gallon, all right? So, uh, and making your truck slower. So, uh, but again, the trucks are not meant to just, you know, go on a drag race or anything. Right, that completes uh, the list of mods that I have done so far to my Tacoma, right? I still have uh, two more items. Uh, they were shipped already, but they haven't arrived yet. One is a uh, roof rack and the other one is a uh, rooftop tent, right? That I'm gonna be installing and probably making videos um, about them. Uh, and when that is done, I will consider that that is my phase one, all right? That is my phase one. That is basically the stage where I wanted to have the truck at. But because we always want more, I already have a wish list, all right, of what, what I'm considering phase two, all right? And things like, for example, uh, a light bar, right? And the bumpers are on that list. So I will be talking about the list uh, after we're done with phase one. But for now, uh, as soon as I install the roof rack and the rooftop tent, I think I should be good to go. I don't think there is anything, I mean, uh, essential or anything like that that I will uh, be needing in the near future. But again, I might just be adding more stuff, right? All the upgrades and all the things that I'm talking about in this specific video are very common, right? Like I see a lot of the other comments that are already, you know, lifted using a leveling kit. They already have uh, all terrain or mud tires. They have a roof rack. They have a bed rack. They have a bed liner. So I'm wondering what of these upgrades, right, that I have specifically done on my truck, have you done to yours, all right, or maybe to your car, or, you know, are you planning to do any of this, and you find uh, this video uh, useful, right, on the uh, pros and cons, and, you know, the reasons why I'm doing it, 
So, uh, you know, I'm just curious. Let me know down in the comments uh, if that's the case. All right, guys, so I wanna thank you so much for watching. I have a lot more content coming. We have the roof rack in the next few days or weeks as well as the rooftop tent, all right? So if you're looking to do any of those, you know, stick around, make sure you subscribe to my channel and, you know, let's see how, uh, how that installation go. Um, I will also be posting uh, videos about my camping trips or hiking trips or off-road trips, right? So, um, you know, make sure to subscribe and leave a like, you know, and I'll see you on the next video. I'm out.